Trump, Biden abandoned Israel and allowed Iranian attack. US President Joe Biden bears part of the blame for Iran's massive drone and missile strike on Israel. Former US President and current Republican frontrunner for the November race, Donald Trump has claimed. The GOP firebrand suggested that a lack of leadership on the part of the Democratic incumbent has emboldened Tehran. Addressing supporters in Schnecksville, Pennsylvania, Trump said that the Iranian strikes took place because we show great weakness. The weakness that we've shown is unbelievable, and it would not have happened if we were in office, he suggested. He concluded by reiterating his absolute support for Israel. Trump has also posted several similar messages on his Truth social platform, such as one saying, this should never have been allowed to happen. This would never have happened if I were president. Trump has previously accused his Democratic rival of not being assertive enough globally and has repeatedly alleged that Biden is unfit for office. A great supporter of Israel, Trump, during his time in office, recognized Syria's Golan Heights, which have been occupied for decades as Israeli territory. He also officially recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital and moved the U.S. Embassy there from Tel Aviv in 2018. Speaking in Atlanta, he told reporters that President Biden had abandoned Israel. Although continuing to support Israel, Biden has of late been increasingly critical of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, citing the mounting civilian casualties in Gaza amid Israel's ongoing military campaign against Hamas. In an interview to MSNBC last month, Biden suggested that the Israeli Prime Minister was committing a big mistake with his hardline approach. Biden pointed out, however, that Washington was never going to leave Israel and would keep providing it with weaponry no matter what. Putin boasts of strikes on Ukrainian energy infrastructure, calls them demilitarization. Vladimir Putin has boasted of Russian strikes on Ukrainian energy infrastructure facilities and called them demilitarization at the meeting with Alexander Lukashenko, president of Belarus. If everything is looped into solving the issues we have been talking about from the very beginning, and in the energy sector they are connected in particular with solving one of the tasks we set for ourselves, demilitarization, the Russian president said. Putin claimed that Russian strikes on energy infrastructure affect the defense industrial complex of Ukraine. The impact is direct, Putin said. As a result of the Russian large-scale attack, fires broke out at energy infrastructure facilities in Lviv, Odessa and Zaporizhia Oblast, and the debris of downed drones fell in the open in Mykolaiv Oblast. It was reported earlier that the Russians attacked energy facilities in Kyiv and Kharkiv oblasts. After another missile attack by the Russians, President Volodymyr Zelensky stated that Ukraine needs strong air defense and other defensive support, not ignoring and lengthy discussions. Putin has called the peace summit in Switzerland, to which Russia has not been invited, a panopticon. As you know, the idea of holding some conference in Switzerland is being prompted now and we are not invited. Moreover, they believe there is nothing for us to do there and at the same time, they say that nothing can be resolved without us. And since we are not going, they say that we are refusing to negotiate. It is some kind of panopticon, Putin said. For reference, a panopticon is a design for a high security prison building with a control system that allows a single warden to observe all the prisoners at once without being noticed. Putin also claimed that he is in favor of negotiations, but not in the format of imposing schemes that have nothing to do with reality. The Russian leader also noted that Russia does not aim to put everything in a difficult position. Biden administration frustrated by delay in aid to Ukraine, but has no plan B. The administration of US President Joe Biden is becoming increasingly frustrated with delays in funding for Ukraine's fight against Russia. There is growing concern in the United States that Russian troops could make significant gains in the coming weeks, according to Bloomberg. According to anonymous American officials, there is no plan B for the US regarding aid to Ukraine apart from the $60 billion military assistance currently under consideration in Congress. One source emphasized that European leaders need to overcome delays and use profits from blocked Russian assets to aid Ukraine. At the same time, another source noted that European countries should also urgently respond to Ukraine's request to provide the country with more Patriot air defense systems from their stockpiles. 
The US president is trying to convince Congress to pass military aid for Ukraine, dissuade Iran from launching strikes against Israel, and press Israel into letting more aid into Gaza. US aid to Ukraine has stalled, allowing Russia to extend the conflict. The Biden administration has decided that it is time to share what it knows about China's significantly increased support for Russia in its war with Ukraine, including through declassifying intelligence, even as a Republican minority in Congress continues to delay weapons delivery to Kyiv. A senior administration official speaking on condition of anonymity outlined, for me, the concerning scale of Beijing's growing support for Moscow's war effort. China is dangerous, the official said, and the administration is determined to show allies evidence of Beijing's growing role in Russia's threats to European security. The official said 90% of the reason Russia has been able to sustain the war effort and reconstitute its economy despite sanctions is due to a massive effort by China that ranges from geospatial assistance for Russian targeting to dual-use optics and propellants used in everything from tanks to missiles.